Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Captain Linnea Axman, and I'm uh, very happy to be presenting Research Design. We're going to talk about survey research, and everybody thinks, you know, they just want to put a little survey together and throw it out there, and then we're going to analyze the data. But there's a lot to doing a well-done survey or developing a good questionnaire. So by the end of this presentation, you should be able to broadly define what, in fact, survey research is, describe the survey research pro process, list three methods to collect survey research data, and identify a point of contact or reference for further information about observational, quasi-experimental, and survey research. So what's the purpose of survey research? Why do we do a survey or administer a questionnaire? We do it to measure some unknown population characteristic, to test hypothesis and study causal relationships between variables, or in fact to develop an instrument or questionnaire to provide evidence in support of that instrument, including reliability and validity. So here's the different ways that we can uh, do data collection uh, when we're doing survey research. We can do a mail survey, telephone, face-to-face, -face, internet, or a combination thereof. And if you use the tailored design, which we're going to talk about, which is specifically so that you can do a combination, it will uh, save you time and money. So when you're doing data collection during survey research, there's some things to remember. During doing survey or questionnaire research is costly and takes time. Some of the things you need to think about as you're developing a questionnaire is how many questions do you really need, what type of questions, and what level of reporting error you're willing to accept. Things also to consider is uh, relate to data quality is what is the respondent burden? Is the individual going to want to answer your 10-page questionnaire? I will tell you most likely not. And then who is your population of interest? What is their reading level? One of the things I like to tell audiences when I talk about questionnaire design is you really need to find out if there aren't already existing uh, reliable and valid instruments. There are so many instruments out there and I will tell you that um, CID and nursing research can help you find existing research instruments as well as the librarian and you want to really make use of those resources if at all possible. It takes about two to three years to actually develop a well done instrument and I bet most of you don't have that kind of time. So here are the stages of a survey research process design and planning, and remember, garbage in, garbage out. You, you have to have uh, well-researched questions, and you need a sampling plan. Who are you going to get to answer these questions? You need to pre-test any, if you're, specifically if you're developing your own instrument, you want to do an informal pre-test, and that includes getting 10 of your best friends and colleagues together and saying, take this, and tell me what you think about it. Um, something called cognitive think aloud interview is where you get a few of your best friends and have them read that aloud with you and, and then say, what does that mean to you? And when they tell you something completely different from what you meant, you know you need to revise your question. After you have your questions the way you want them, then you perform a formal pilot study. And this needs to include some method of demonstrating reliability and validity. You need to get your statistician involved early and often here because depending on the number of questions, that will then tell you how many individuals you need to perform your pilot study. Yes, you can probably get away with 30 people, but you may have difficulty then demonstrating reliability and validity, particularly reliability. Then you'll want to do your final survey design from your pilot study because your pilot study should uh, highlight, again, any difficulties in administration, uh, the feasibility of your questionnaire. Most well-done questionnaires are no more than four pages, and they are done in a 12 font. Okay, so now you're going to collect your data, and when you get it, you're going to monitor it for data quality. You're going to code that data, and um, anyone that has taken a questionnaire knows that it's often done using a Likert or Likert scale. And so that, those, that information needs to be put into a database, and errors can be made. So you want to go back and check your data for errors. 
clean your data if you've made some errors, and then finally you want to get to your data analysis. Again, and I keep stressing this, this needs to include some method of demonstrating reliability and validity, especially if you're ever going to want to publish this. Uh, I can tell you, um, quite frankly, that no peer-reviewed journal will publish a questionnaire or its findings without reliability and validity. And then you want to do your final report, and, and also you're going to want to get this instrument published if it's a new instrument. What we haven't covered a lot, the types of pretests, uh, determining a sample size it can actually be very, very complex. It includes sampling error, um, level of reliability. The rule of thumb with questionnaires, and I do not recommend you use rule of thumb to determine your sample size, but just so you can get an idea of what you're doing, is you need five to ten participants for every question on a questionnaire. So if you have a hundred item questionnaire, well you do the math, anywhere from 500 to a thousand participants uh, for that study. Again, sources of error, non-response, you need to uh, always figure in for non-response. And if you're going to be giving your questionnaire more than once to the same individuals, you also have to account for attrition. In the military, our attrition rate can be as high as 40%. So if you're looking at needing a population, or excuse me, a sample of 1,000 and you have a 40% attrition rate, now you need 1,400 people to start with. We haven't talked about how to manipulate the data, how to account for missing responses or missing data, how to do the psychometrics with reliability and validity, and the analysis, the actual analysis of the survey data. So as I said, get your statistician involved early and use them often. This is a very good site for how to develop a questionnaire. It's the Agency for Healthcare Research Quality Data and Surveys. And this is a free site, and the information they offer is open and free to the public. Here's some more very good resources. Dillman is the one that developed the tailored design method that I talked about very briefly early on. This is where you develop a questionnaire, and it can be used face-to-face, -face, mail, telephone, uh, in, on the internet. And then Shaja and Blair is a real quick uh, little uh, pamphlet, uh, but has a lot of good information. It is old, yes, but it is still um, very usable.